Good afternoon. This is John Bushka. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about Section 230, the hearings before the Supreme Court tomorrow. Um, they are Google versus Gonzalez and Twitter, which is about Section 230 directly, as well as the American Terrorism Act. And then Twitter versus um, Twitter versus Tam Tamnet, I think. Um, and that's only about the American Terrorism Act directly. Um, so, so let me just start here. Just, just to break the ice, one of my favorite pictures of a, of a train set that I had, sort of a little world, but that was just for entertainment. Um, Let's bring up the picture of the Constitution Center in Philadelphia that I visited in 2005, and also of a building that I visited in 2006 where the, the trial for the Ch Ch Child Online Protection Act was held in Philadelphia also. Um, so all of this um, has to do with freedom of reach, with the idea that a speaker like me, without anybody pre-screening his ability to be online or pre-reviewing his content, can broadcast it to the world. And that was something that COPA, the Child Online Protection Act, back in back in um, in um, when it was passed in 1998 and finally resolved in 2007. I was involved in that. Dealt with well. Right now, the concern, of course, is that in the Google case, it's, which was brought, um, be, well, both of these were about events, about um, terror attacks overseas. The Google case was about an attack in France in 2015 that attracted a lot of attention at time. And then the other, the Twitter case is about just about the American terror, the ATA, and it, there is an implication that Section 230 is affected, sort of subsumed underneath. Um, but the main point of the Google case is, of course, that they are selecting content for you to see by using algorithms. But that's also true with search engines, with ordinary sites and blogs, where Google and other search engines order the Pre present the items that they find, the URLs they find in this preference order, sometimes based on your activity in the past. Um, however, um, it would appear, at least to me anyway, that it, is, that it is the world of video that would be, you know, YouTube particularly, that would be most affected by a bad ruling from the Supreme Court in the Gonzalez case. I'm not quite so sure on the other one. There's also in both cases, this idea that a platform has general knowledge that users might, that sign up might be affected, involved with terrorism, and so they have some sort of vague responsibility to find out who these users are before they can be on. And that's what would be a very frightening conclusion to come up with. Um, you would eventually either have to do a lot more monitoring of content, or you would have to particularly pre-screen people before they were allowed to speak. Now, and I talked a lot about that about in a blog post that I'll link in, in the description. Um, blogs, generally speaking, are promoted by users themselves. Um, often they're, they are from organizations or particularly from companies with something to sell. So typically, the people that run them have email lists, and, and indeed, this company called Blog Tyrant that put, you know, used to push the idea of blogging as a way to make a living, and it was a number of years ago until video sort of supplanted it in the middle of the last decade. Um, but the strategy was to be very aggressive in contacting people by email. But of course, that can be objectionable. Be a lot of people can there can be issues with spam and just not wanting to be contacted. If, if you have the ability to organize people yourself for your own business and get them to work with you, then you're not, you wouldn't be as concerned with Section 230 affecting you. So you can think about that 
in some kinds of industries. I can see that how in some kinds of businesses, even in the movie business, that could be like screenwriting or something that could be a very effective, could be coming to play as an effective idea. Um, but if you're depending on algorithms just to find more people to get in touch with you, that you don't have to really work and network with them in person or get involved in other causes, get involved in raising money for people or protesting or helping other people with other things, get involved in issues and get involved in taking sides and not thinking that that's beneath you to have to do that. Um, I know that's difficult now with a lot of things like you know CRT and gender ideology and a lot of things that are going on. But you kind of have to be involved if you are going to survive this, you kind of have to be involved with real people a lot more than even I was. I have you know relatively few visitors and, and I don't use algorithms very much, I just use search engines to be found. But on a few issues, I've been able to be particularly effective. Gays in the military was the main one back a number of years ago. Um, and so, and there are a few others, um, filial responsibility laws was one of them, but there have been a few where I've gotten some recognition, even with low volume. Now that might go away for me with a very bad ruling from the Supreme Court on these. Um, but in fact, I've cut down my own internet presence. I cut down most of my blogs down to just one. It, you know, essentially it, the beginning of 2022 after having Blogger for 16 years and having WordPress blogs for six years um, because I didn't think I would be able to sustain it if Section 230 was kept on getting attacked all the time and, if, and because of some other things that were going on. We'll talk about it another time. Um, but that, the concern with that really started back in 2018 with FOSTA and SESTA. So yeah, I've dealt with this for a long time. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if you did pre-screen people, you would be, you might look at whether they were actually running a legitimate business. Well, to do that, they have to pester other people and play ball with the way business is usually done, which is aggressively contacting people to sell them things, you know, they'll always be closing things. Or they'd have to be, they'd have to be social, have some social, kind of social credit worthiness, which we don't really have a formal system. Or they would be, have to belong to an oppressed group and do conventional activism the way we know, particularly the left and the right does it too, you know, within their own tribes. Um, you know, demanding, the left demands that everybody join them on anti-racism, for example, before they're allowed to have a job practically, you know, you would wind your yourself, you would wind up back in that position. So that's the great concern that I have. 